Oh, oh, you yeah, fuck it off. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, Sussex, but I have a destination. Well, Tone, I thought you should know we're approaching Homer T. Good. That means he'll be there. Guy, are you nearly done? We should have been on our way to Brighton by now, and I need to get a move on before I see... Haha! <laughs> Greetings, cousin! That. Before that happens. Just then, the guard blew his whistle. Right away, Guy! And Johnny started once again with his milk truck, trying to come up with something clever to say when he got back to Brighton. When he got there, Wilton was already chatting away with Oliver and Rafferty, reminiscing and laughing. Nicholas was also there. It would appear that your cousin has taken quite a shine to many of the engines here at Brighton. Well, she has a way of doing that. Wilton has always been a bit of a, um... I heard you say my name, Johnny boy. Darn it. Uh, um... <laughs> yes, but nothing too important. Well, you mentioned my name, Johnny, so I assume it is important. What were you saying about me? Well, actually, your cousin was about to say something nice about you, Wilton. Carry on, Johnny. No, nothing like that. I was just about to say to Nicholas how your overconfidence in this competition will be your ultimate downfall. Really? Well, maybe your negligence is giving you a massive oversight in this whole competition, Johnny. I'm not even allocated to the shed, and yet for the past week or so I've been running my trains to speed and to time which is a task you're failing to grasp, Battle of Britain. I am a lot more focused than you realise, West Country, and I will prove that to you. Really? Really? Says the engine who muddled up his chain valve gear a while back. Let's just hope the lightning doesn't strike twice when going up against me. Well, if you're not careful, the storm will eventually catch up to you. Silence, you rivet! Well, that was just plain rude. <laughs> I think so, too. They are both right, Johnny. This competition, combined with overbearing amounts of work, is getting to your smoke box. What are you talking about? If you would spare a moment to take on old engine's advice, please stop and think for a moment. Otherwise, I'm afraid Wilton has a point, and lightning will strike you hard on the tender. Perhaps. Perhaps you're right, Nicholas. But sometimes family disputes can be... This is not a family debate. This is something else. I don't know what, but it is as a result of this competition that ultimately does not matter in the end. You have a point, Nicholas. Thinking about it does help. But in this scenario, maybe I just need a bit more time. I'm still going to carry on. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. Good engine! And smiled at Johnny as he rolled off to go and get cold. I don't even know why those two are fighting it out verbally anyway. They should know that neither of them is going to win against the other. How... How, how do you mean, Rafferty? Well... The West Country class and the Battle of Britain class are in many aspects the same engine, but the Southern Railway decided to split them up for publicity reasons. When you pitch the two classes against each other, it is really a case of who will run out of coal and water first. As they are so evenly matched, but the same cannot be said for their attitudes. Both the Blue Tank Engine and the Ugly Duckling agreed with the Greyhound. But when it came to attitudes, the same could not be said for Sakai. The N15 was determined to prove to everyone and to himself that he could do it. As for Sakai, this was not just about winning the competition to pull the Golden Arrow. This was more of a personal crusade. But none of the engines realised this. I can do this. I know I can do this, and everyone will see. No misjudgments, not this time. Speaking of time, I think I can gain a couple more minutes on this one. More speed, please, driver. 
The driver pushed the regulator further out, and soon he was at a good high speed towards his final destination. However, Oliver had pressing concerns towards the engine that he considered a friend, and was worried. So that night he decided to talk to him about the competition. Okay, is everything okay? You seem to be a bit, 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 bit um, agitated about the competition. Oh, don't worry yourself, Oliver. I'm not agitated in the slightest. What I am is focused and determined. Why? Well, you see, Oliver, even though I hold most of you here at Brighton in the highest regards, there are some who don't think the same about me. I know for a fact that a lot of engines think of me as boastful and too self-confident for his own buffers. And that is why I think a lot of engines don't believe I can pull the train. And to be honest, maybe I don't want to pull it. But I want to show them that I can do it, so that they could think of me in a better light. That is why I've been acting this way about it all. Oliver didn't exactly know what to say. He had never heard Sir Kay to be so deep and honest like this with anyone. But for some sort of reason, it didn't make any sense to him even though that Sir Kay was quite articulate. Are you sure about about that? I, I, I mean, these these engines are, are, are your friends. M maybe maybe it's, it's just you. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. I'm still going to prove it to everyone when I set off out to Brighton with a full head of steam tomorrow morning. But as he drifted off to sleep, Oliver's words played on his mind, as secretly, Sir Kay knew he was right. The next morning, Sir Kay was fired up rather early, sometime around 6 o'clock for one of the first passenger trains of the day. It was around this time that Johnny had returned from his morning milk run. So, you ready to try and go for gold then? Just you wait and see. I am more than capable of doing this, and I like to think of myself as a rather intellectual sort of engine. So that is why I'm going to learn from my previous runs, as I believe my ultimate downfall is my start. I need a good fast start out of the station. That ought to do the trick. Soon Sir Kay was coupled up to his coaches. His steam pressure rose, his chimney blasted out a gargantuous amount of smoke and his wheels span as he left the station to proceed down the main line towards London. That's right, full power, full power, full power to OK. <laughs> Let's just hope he doesn't push himself to the breaking point. Speaking of the point, you're not so into this competition anymore, are you? Well, Rafferty, I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong, I want to pull the Golden Arrow as much as the next engine, but recently, I'm thinking it's put a bit of a strain between me and my cousin and put a lot of pressure on Sir Kay to get it right. Two, 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 Squadron. Are you finally realising that? <laughs> Hush, Rafferty. But, yes, I... Guess maybe I'm learning from my mistakes a lot more often. Rafferty smiled broadly, and from the corner of the shed, Nicholas had heard everything and felt very proud of his friend. Meanwhile, on the main line, Sir Kay was giving it his all heading towards Haywards Heath, and not too far away, Wilson was also speeding along the line in the opposite direction towards Haywards Heath as well. And for trouble, both for her and Sir Kay. I can't be late. I cannot be late. How on earth could I be late? I know you had trouble starting this morning, but that gives you no excuse to go right to the edge of the speed limit. I've got to make it on time. The results will come in tomorrow and it's a compromise my chances of putting the goals narrow, so I can't slow down. I can do this, I will do this, I must do this. Careful Sir Kay, you're running ahead of time and as far as I'm concerned you're giving a good service right now so there's no need to overdo it. I'm not overdoing it, I just know I can do much better than this. 
Like you said, I am running well this morning, but I know I can do better. But both Sir Kay and Wilton spoke too soon. None of them were stopping at Hayrasi Station, so both of them were going to be going past at speed, not only through the station, but also through the tunnel. Both Wilton and Sir Kay were going faster than usual, so this meant they were burning more coal and exhausting more smoke and steam. Soon, both engines were approaching opposite ends of the tunnel and the station. There weren't many passengers on the station, but they were all in for a surprise. Suddenly, Sir Kay entered the tunnel and Wilton approached the station. It all happened at once! Look out! What on earth? Oh no. My gosh, who is that? Oh, crap. Ah! Is that Wilton? Oh, ah, 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 ah. What's going on? I don't believe it! You've definitely overdone it now. Out! My goodness, that... <coughs> that was too close for comfort. What did I tell you, you silly girl? I'm slowing you down right now. What's, What's going, going on? on? When we get to the next junction, I'll tell you. When we get to Brighton, uh, you'll find out. Oh, well, that's just spectacular. Oh, dear. What have I done? Okay, so what exactly happened? Well, essentially it was a combination of high speed, air pressure, thick amounts of toxic fumes, and overbearing confidence from respective engines. As a result, I scraped the edge of my casing whilst going over the limit. And myself gaining a pair of hot axle boxes. That's why I felt so hot. There was fault on both parts in this situation. Well, I'm very glad you realised that. Though for some sort of reason, I don't think the inspector is going to see it that way. Especially for what happened afterwards. What happened afterwards was inconsequential to the incident at hand. Me, Wilson and Johnny are the real victims here. Whoa, hang on, that's not fair. You came into Three Bridges to sort out your axle boxes. You engulfed me in so much steam it was like being in a fog. No regards to me, my crew or anyone else at the station. I was boiling, Shirley. There were a lot of things going on in that moment, and that's a perfectly reasonable distraction to get annoyed about. You're a steam engine, you Nimrod. You're always boiling. They don't nickname us kettles for nothing. Yeah, what about my paint? I was waiting on some corner points, and Wilton, you came round so sharply, resulting in one of your coaches scratching my Caledonian livery. Not to mention the soot damage. You can't prove that. Wilton, you're literally red buffered. My buffers are always red. And anyway, if you hadn't been witty with your truck so close to the point, you wouldn't have received scrapes in your paint in the first place. Well, of course, the answer is so simple. Unless there was this thing called a signal, this particular one was against me and I couldn't proceed any further. You could have moved back. I was on a roll in my work. You're always on the roll. We have wheels for crying out loud. Shut up the pair of you. Arguing does not help anything. It just causes more frustration to everyone else in the shed. Correct, Albert. Actually, hang on. Hold on a minute. How am I a victim in this? Because you, along with Wilton and me, were the ones competing for the go to narrow in the first place. And when the railway inspector gets here, he is going to scold the engines that started this problem from the beginning. And if I recall correctly, one of those engines was you, 222 Squadron. Johnny! My name is Johnny for crying out loud. How is that so difficult to remember? You can read. Start using the name on your nameplate. My name is in honour of the man who led that squadron. It would be dishonourable not to use his name. Alright you two, stop this now! Honestly, what is this, 1951? I would have thought that after four years of working together at this shed, you would have learned better than to argue with one another. And yet you're the one in this argument with us. I am not in any arguments, okay? I am merely just trying to stop it altogether before it goes too far. <laughs> I agree. L listen to Nicholas. Oliver, shut up. Okay. Just like that. But I do slightly agree that the competition for the Golden Arrow 
is the origin of this aggravation. Or maybe it's just you. Just then, a tall figure walked across the tracks towards the engines. It was the railway inspector. It seems these two express engines are the ones responsible for this mishap. Well, it's not exactly a mess up, sir. See it? You the don't get to talk. Not until I say so. Because you engines and your crews need to know that acting irresponsibly on the main line during operations, resulting in the breaking of the speed limit and damaging yourself in the slightest, is not accepted. Suddenly, the two big engines felt rather small. Well, they are both sorry, sir. Yeah, and we do realise what we have done. At least I do. And I'm sure Sir Kay does too. But how was one of us supposed to know that another engine was going at that speed? That doesn't matter. You and your crews know the regulations and should abide by them to avoid this non-sequential nonsense from happening. And for what? Over an express train? It only started out as a friendly competition, sir. Well, that friendly competition was to determine which engines were suitable. And quite frankly, other engines from other sheds have done better performances than you've been able to display. The inspector stared at Sakai. Even though you managed to cover a great distance and achieve a great speed for someone of your class, you should know your place. Realize that you are less than antiquated. You are not built for the speeds of the Pacifics, and you wouldn't even be allowed to pull the golden arrow in the first place. So why on earth would you give yourself a hot axle box to try and gain something which you cannot get? Well... Um, I, uh, y you see, I- That is enough! Wilton decided to pluck up courage. I assume that this means that none of us get to pull the golden arrow? As a matter of fact, you don't. Your Battle of Britain, on the other hand, has a very good chance according to the Sigdomen and Timekeepers. He is the only one out of the three of you who hasn't strained himself and instead kept to time and speed. He will pull the golden arrow when it is deemed necessary. The southern region has allocated three Britannia locomotives in various locations and one of them is going to be operating the golden arrow alongside a couple of merchant navy pacifics. That's correct. I've met one of those Britannias in the metal. William Shakespeare was his name. I helped him out when he was having trouble with a long train. Nice engine. <clears throat> Permission to speak, sir. <sighs> yes. I think I speak on behalf of all of us when I say that these free engines are You do not have the right to speak on behalf of anyone! The engines were horrified by what they just saw and heard. Bottom line is that you steam engines are becoming more of a problem every single day, and it is instances like this which makes British Railways feel on edge about your ability to carry out your duties. Remember that you all pledged your services after nationalisation, and you steam locomotives are becoming unreliable in regards to maintenance, running your trains, and especially with instances like this where customers are supposed to rely on you, you let them down. You failed to do so. And this incident proves that. And once again, it always comes down to money. That is why the Board of Directors think it's about time you steam engines were put in check, or better still, PUT ASIDE! The engines were absolutely silent, shocked, and at the same time rather scared. I will report this to the Board. In the meantime, you crews must clean up your act and focus on what's important. To do your jobs effectively and properly. No gallivanting in your daydreams. Good night! And with that, the inspector walked crossly away. The engines were all downcast. Nicholas felt like he should say something, but all he could say was, Let's wait until morning, before we say anything else. Morning, Nicholas. Good morning, Oliver. 
How are you feeling? Well, I, I, I think that I, after thinking about it, I th 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 think I want to do the very best I can I, 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 and work my hardest today. Oliver is absolutely right, but at the same time, the railway inspector was right. I apologise for yesterday, Oliver. Th that's alright, Sir Kay. You were just stressed. I agree. In this day and age, when times are changing for the men and women of the railways, we all need to be on the right track, so to speak. Well said, Johnny. Well, we should not look at this in a bad way. Just think of it as a chance to look at things in a different way. A more optimistic way. Even though we might feel down at times, we must not forget our overall agenda and our overall purpose on this railway. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Good idea. Well, I guess what you said to me was right, Johnny. Nicholas is indeed one of a kind. He certainly is that. He brings the best out of all of us. I think a lot of us would be lost without him. All right, everybody. Let's get to work. And let's try looking at this in a more positive and active light, as we are all about to go and do the jobs that we were built for. And we are going to do those jobs to the best of our abilities. Not just for us, but for the men and women that us as steam locomotives are here to give the service that is required of us. Well, we might as well. After all, we are the locomotives of British Railways. You know, all the engines think that you have it all under control, but deep down in that boiler of yours, there's something more, isn't there? Well, I will not argue against that, my friend, for there is something that has been troubling me for quite some time now. How long? Since 1952. What could have possibly been bothering you for two years straight? Something that the other engines are yet to know about. They are aware of it, but they are yet to know the full details. I know what you're talking about, but there's smart engines in that shed. They're going to figure it out eventually. Yes, you are right, Rafferty. You are definitely right there. Sooner or later, the other engines at Brighton are going to discover that the modernization the modernization of British Railways is coming down the tracks. 